Coming up on Friday night in Houston, Texas, it is Bellator 149. We're now joined by one of the men that's going to be a part of the main car that you can watch live on Spike TV as he's going to be taking on Daniel Pineda. It is Emmanuel Sanchez, who is 12-2 and two in his career. He's won four of his five fights in Bellator. Emmanuel, appreciate the time. You know, obviously, you know, you're know you 4-1 in Bellator, but you still seem to be kind of that under-the-radar guy. You know, people really... Uh, when they think of the Bellator featherweights, you're one of the names that doesn't necessarily come up. Do you like the fact that you're under the radar, or is it one of those things of, I need to do something to get people talking about me? Um, yeah, you know, but it, it's all right. You know, I don't, uh, you know, frown upon it or cry about it. Uh, I'm very happy with what I'm accomplished and what I'm pursuing to accomplish. And it's all right. When the time is right, that stuff will come. If not, you know, I'm a simple man. I live a simple life. I just want to go out, get my victories, be able to, to support myself with what I love to do, and everything else will take care of itself. Of course, you're coming off that win against Justin Lord, split decision win, your last two wins coming via via split decision. Uh, overall, have you been happy with your performances, or, or do you feel like maybe you've left us something, maybe a little bit in the cage on those nights? Um. Yeah. Uh, I'm happy, obviously, because I got my hand raised. That's the most important thing. But I'm not happy because they should have been finishers. You know, I had Justin Lawrence in some dangerous positions, especially when I hit him with a head kick. Uh, that should have been a finish. You know, but uh, I just got a little too emotional, you know, and uh, I kind of saved my belt kind of a thing in this situation uh, for him. But uh, the same thing happened with Henry Corrales. I pulled a flying triangle. And I just missed my hole, and he was able to escape the triangle. So, you know, uh, these are finishes. This would have been that would have been a first and second round finish right there. So, uh, fighting, I fought one too many rounds in 2015. 2016, I want to start my other streak of finishes. Is, is there anything in particular that you, you you talk about? You know, getting emotional. Uh, is that simply you think the key to, to getting the vic, getting those stoppage victories, or do you just feel like it's you, you just have to put the the you know, the foot on the gas pedal when you get those opportunities? Um, yeah, probably foot on, foot on the gas pedal when you get those opportunities. You know, like Bruce Lee said, you just got to flow like water. Because, uh, you know, I, I I wondered too, you know, watching these fights, I'm like, man, that was my hole, that was my opportunity. Or, oh, man, that would have been the finish right there. And I don't see it just in, you know, the uh, the last two fights. You know, I, feel this, I see it in all of my fights. You know, in my first professional fight, my second professional fight, I look back and I'm like, you know, damn it, man, that should have been a finish. And, you know, I'm feel I'm very hard on myself on that because uh, I pride myself on wanting to go out and finish the fight. I mean, why did we agree and sign a, a contract to go out and fight, you know, to win by knockout or submission or until the ref pulls you off? So, you know, uh, every single time I, I you get that hunger and that feeling for that finish, you, you want it again. So... That's what I want. That's what I'm really hungry for. I mean, I know as a fighter, you're ultimately you're going to look at you know where are the things you have to improve on. But when you look at your four fight, uh, your five fight run here in Bellator, what do you think are some of the positive things that you've been able to accomplish? Um, that you know, uh, to get something you never had, you got to do things you've never done. So I'm actually very uh, happy that I've been able to take fights on short notice. You know. All of my amateur fights, I never believed that I could take a fight on short notice. I was like, uh, you know, you know, I was a kid, you know what I mean? As an amateur, you let yourself blow up. You're eating pizza and donuts and ice cream all the time and celebrating a win. And, you know, now as a professional, uh, you know, you got to maintain your weight well. And, you know, you never know when you're going to get that phone call. And uh, I received a lot of them in 2015. <laughs> so uh, it was great, man. I'm happy that I was able to go out, make the weight healthy. And then go out and compete and get the job done. You mentioned about going out there, you know, making weight, doing it healthy. What's your thoughts on what it was happening in the industry right now in, in terms of weight cutting? We see what the, the state of California is doing and and wanting to get rid of uh, IVs. They they don't want fighters making weight via dehydration. What what's your kind of thoughts on where the sport is heading in terms of that aspect? Um, you know, I think it's good for the sport. Uh, for some fighters, you know, now there's no IV, so I know that's difficult for a lot of guys, but the thing is, you become very reliant on that, you know, so that can also be bad for you, too, if you think about it. I mean, if you come and rely on something and then you can't have it, that's got to be bad for you, you know, so it's 
really, it's honestly something you don't need. It's just something that you want and that you're used to. So, um, for me, you know, seeing if that, if that, that was to happen, if I was to fall in any of those deadlines, you know, with weight cutting and, you know, the one FC rules now, uh, I mean, then I'd be fighting as a lost weight. And then I'd have to maintain my weight at about 100. 60 pounds like that, and I still have to dehydrate myself, you know, 10-ish plus pounds to make my weight class, weight limit. And some might say it's dangerous, some might say it's bad, but, you know, I've still gone out and fought, you know, three rounds very well and felt great afterwards. So, you know, there's no complaints for me here. Once again, we're joined by Emmanuel Sanchez. He's going to be returning to the Bellator cage on Friday night. Bellator 149 as he takes on Daniel Pineda, who is returning to Bellator. It's been some time uh, since Daniel has fought in Bellator, all the way back uh, Bellator 19, uh, but making his return here. He has won three in a row uh, since his exit from the UFC. Uh, all those fights coming in legacy. Uh, in, in preparations for Daniel, do you just try to pay attention to his most recent fights, or do you like to go back time to maybe try to see the evolution of his game? Um, I believe he's uh, evolutionized a lot. You know, it's been a while since uh, he's been in Bellator. You know, I know he probably misses the play like a big show here, but, um, you know, it's just another veteran that I get to go out and take him out, man. I'm so excited. You know, he's put on great performances. Obviously, he's finished all of his fights that he barely bears on the distance. So I know what I'm stepping myself into, you know, he's a very, very dangerous opponent, but I'm excited to just go out there and prove why I'm better with him and I have 15 minutes to do it. Why do you think you're better than him? Yeah, um, so he is, as you can say on paper, more experienced with more fights, but I believe I have better fight IQ. You know, watching me fight, uh, everything I do, I do tactical. You know, it's uh, this is real modern warfare. So in watching his fights and watching his preparation, you're good, you're skilled, but, you know, I faced guys like him before, so uh, I'm excited. It's always a new challenge. It's always a new challenge, and I believe I'm better than him everywhere because I can put it all together. On paper, he may be a better jiu-jitsu guy. He may be stronger. He may be even hit harder, you know, whatever the stats may say, but that's, that's paper don't fight paper, you know. Probably do it in the ring. What is the biggest challenge that he brings to, to the cage? And is that the type of challenge you have seen previously? Um, the, a grappling savvy uh, type of fighter. You know, uh, I'm not afraid uh, or intimidated at all. It's, uh, it's very impressive what he's been able to do. Um, and what I've seen in his fights, you know, I, I respect it. I, you know, it's, as a fan, you know, it's, it's good to watch too. It's what the fans want to see. But, also, I uh, believe that his opponents let them, you know, get in his head that way. And it's a double-edged sword because he has lost that way as well, you know. So if he wasn't finishing someone, he was getting finished. So I know his losses lie in that as well. And that's where I believe I was capitalizing those openings. And, of course, you'll be able to see this fight on Spike TV. The main car is starting at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Bellator 149, of course, it's got the double main event. Ken Shamrock, Hoist Gracie, also Kimbo Slice, and Dada 5000. Final thing, man, I really do appreciate you taking some time out of your schedule to talk to me. Uh, is it, it Once you get the win here, are you going to uh, – is, is there a call-out coming? Do you feel like you, you got to call out one of those top guys, or is your mentality of – um, you know what, I, I don't care who the guy across the cage from me is. I just want it to be a better opponent than my last opponent. Um, yeah, yes, sir. Uh, I've never been a call-out guy. I've always just been uh, win your fights and everything else will take care of itself, honestly. You know, that's what I truly believe. Uh, I'm no complainer. I'm just an entertainer. So no matter who it is standing across the cage from me, short or tall, big or small, he will fall. And that's what I'm looking to do. Uh, I always put on exciting fights, no matter who they are. And it doesn't matter. I'm always looking to get my hand raised and get to finish. Emmanuel, appreciate time and good luck in the fight, man. Thank you very much, sir.